Hi, I'm Ari, I'm the Oak Witch, and today's video is going to be all about altars. My aim for this video is to go through the basic questions, you know, what is an altar, are there different types of altars, what should I put on my altar, and also I'm going to go through a little tour of my own uh, sacred space. For anyone who uh, doesn't really care for altar advice, I'm going to put a timestamp for my altar tour here that you can jump to if you'd want. Um, I appreciate some people just don't care about altar advice, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine, you can go see my altar here. So as I just mentioned, an altar is quite literally a sacred space. Physically, mentally and spiritually, it is an area you are devoting to being sacred. And honestly, what you do with your altar, what you put on your altar, entirely depends on you. Because everyone is so unique, not one which looks the same, of course your altar is just going to look completely different to perhaps another witch's. Another thing I want to note is that altars tend to depend on your tradition. I am a solitary witch who practices a lot of folk magic, so... That obviously is going to reflect in my advice. If you are into ceremonial magic, if you are looking to get into a specific tradition of witchcraft and paganism, um, then obviously what you have in your altar is going to depend on that. Some, For example, some Wiccan traditions, you have certain objects on your altar and your altar is in a certain compass direction. Um, it all just really depends. Uh, so I want to bear that in mind, of course, certain altars can have certain, like, rules. Um, but that only really depends on, like, if you're in a specific tradition. So I just thought I'd sort of put that out there. That it does, it does depend. There are some labels used to define different altars and their purpose. For example, travel altars. Now this can look like a wooden box or a small little tin or a bag. Uh, generally for on-the-go uses. Ancestor altars are literally a sacred space dedicated to honouring your ancestors or deceased loved ones. Deity altars are also quite similar in that you are honouring a deity. This is a space you are dedicating to give your offerings, to work with your deities, say your prayers and etc. You have um, outside altars. This is literally an altar that is outside. Um, and its purpose, I guess, can really just depend on what you want to do with the space. Um, but generally, I'd say people use them to, like, honour nature and have a dedicated sort of nature altar. But of course, it just sort of depends on what you want to do with the space. So, yeah, I mean, altars can really just be as simple as that. It is literally just a space you are dedicated to being sacred for your spiritual use, for your magical use. In general, a space you are devoting time to work on your spiritual journey and that sort of spiritual progression so you'll do all your workings in this space. I see a lot of um, beginners ask what do I put on my altar and honestly this really just depends on what you want. I'd say use your intuition. So before I give some like uh, solid advice on what you could put on there I want to sort of just be with you in this moment and just talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. Take a moment to just sit with yourself and think, is there anything which you want to put on there? Don't think about the magical and spiritual use, just think about internally the feeling that you get. Is there anything you want to put on there? Perhaps meditate on some uh, signs or symbols or images or maybe animals or plants or objects that you own or are just in the room you're currently in. Is there anything which stands out to you? And if you don't know their spiritual or magical properties, if you don't know what you would use them for spiritually or magically, that's okay. Perhaps if there is an object which you don't know but you know that you sort of want it there, do some research. If it's a figure of an animal for example, you can research the animal's historical and mythological use and prevalence. So yeah, just take some time to be with yourself and try not to really go into this process thinking what you should be putting on there. Don't try and think about all the really lovely Instagram altars that you may have seen, which I'm sure are fabulous, but 
think about just what really like holds some significant meaning to you already and how you could use that for your sacred space. So obviously in a general working altar, uh, the purpose of this altar and what you do on it obviously just kind of can entail multiple different things. And if I was to give uh, my first bit of advice on what to put on your altar, it would be a bit more like practical items. So the first two items I would recommend are incense sensors or holders and oil burners. So why I'm picking these two items is because I think they encompass quite a lot of elemental magic. Incense is something that's used quite a lot in the craft, be it creating your own or just buying incense sticks. The smell and the smoke is element air, the actual herb inside the incense is obviously earth and the fire obviously lights the incense producing the smell it all interconnects with these elements with oil burners it is pretty much the same obviously you get the fire from the tea light which boils or heats up the essential oil which is the herb correspondences from the element earth and obviously produces the smell which is the element air and i guess the element water being like the actual oil but yeah the next item I'd say is having like a candle holder. Over the years I've collected different candle holders um, but specifically the ones I use regularly for my spell workings are just like a candle plate and another sort of glass style candle plate like this. I'd recommend getting something pretty much as simple as this. You can melt the underside of the candle so you can stick it there if it doesn't obviously stand on its own so it can burn without you obviously holding it up on a, a simple plate like this i recommend getting something like this if you're going to be using a lot of candle magic because you want to practice fire safety you want to make sure that you're not just like burning a straight candle on like a piece of cloth or something one it's messy one it's a bit hazardous so get yourself like a fireproof candle holder going further with this idea of putting sort of element representations on your altar so for the element of water you could use a cauldron not only is a cauldron obviously useful it's usually a like fireproof container right um so you can use that for incense you can use that for any sort of like fire related uses um but it's a vessel it's a container you could do all sorts of water magic in there so usually a cauldron is a symbol of water you could just have a bowl or a chalice of course you don't need these things it's only if you're gonna be using them i'd say put them on there if you want to incorporate some water magic in your craft and having like a representation of like water a cup is gonna help and be practical at the same time i personally really like incorporating tea or i like the idea of incorporating tea into my craft and obviously that is element water combining earth as well with the dried herbs and the infusions so if you want i'd say just like get a kale get a teapot and put that on your altar i don't personally have it but i've always loved the idea perhaps i'll, perhaps I'll do that but yeah you can incorporate different teas and that could be a part of um, your sort of magic so that again obviously is a representation of water for fire i guess the most obvious one that comes to mind right now is candles um also you don't have to have like actual fire candles if you can't burn any candles use the led candles you know the ones that are led <laughs> um just use those i think those are fine as well lots of witches use them you'll be surprised for earth there are so many options of course there's the dried herbs um nature like plants crystals you can have actual like house plants yeah i mean anything you can really think of for earth is a bit obvious yeah you can just put in like general plant material on your altar and yeah go out for a walk um be in nature talk to the land spirits <laughs> talk to your deities in nature and if you see anything which calls out to you maybe a pine cone on the floor pick it up thank the land for it and put it on your altar you know like it, it doesn't have to be too complicated air we've already spoken about the incense i like to have a bell as well um, a bell for me helps sort of signify um a sacred um working that i'm about to do perhaps it's me calling on my deities and i ring the bell for them or in ritual purposes 
people use bells as well. Um, and in, in a secular sense, you could also just use bells to be like, uh, if you sit down on your altar and just before you begin your magical workings, you ring a bell to signify like this is now a sacred moment. Uh, so yeah, obviously bells, sound, that element air, that could be something you might want to use on your altar. People use feathers as well. I don't personally use feathers, but obviously that, I guess, signifying, um, I, I guess, the element earth from animals, but also from birds, flight, wind, etc. So you can use feathers in that sense. And I guess if you're going to look at the element spirit, I would just argue that's you. You know, you are you are spirit. You being at your altar is an element of spirit in itself. So I wouldn't really think too hard on that one. <laughs> so other items you might want to put on your altar are any method of divination that you may do. Do you have tarot cards, oracle cards? Do you have some runes? Do you have a pendulum? Do you have a scrying mirror? There are so many different methods of divination. Um, if you've seen the Wikipedia page, you would know that, oh my gosh, there is so many methods of divination. Um, of course, not all witches um, practice divination, but it is quite common. So if you know that it's something you really want to get into, of course, you can do divination at your altar. That's the perfect place to do it. So just keep some tarot cards at your altar. I have mine literally right here in my rooms. So yeah. If you are thinking about working with deities, or if you do work with deities, then uh, maybe actually have some visual representations of those deities on your altar. Don't get too worried about um, big statues. Yes, they are amazing. And if you have the money and you want to spend it, then I'm not shaming you. Go, go ahead and do it. My point is that I guess, I mean, when I was young, when I was really young, when I was, you know, like 12 and was looking at different deities and looking into paganism for the first time I wanted all the statues <laughs> I saw statues of Hecate and you know I saw them all online and I really wanted them but uh, yeah my point is that I, you don't need them um, it's not a requirement at all to work with a deity on your altar a simple just visual representation whatever that may look like is enough maybe even just a candle that I think is completely fine. I will go through my own sort of uh, symbolic representations of deities on my altar later on because um, I don't have any statues right now so. Another really um, simple way of doing it is literally just like print out a photo of them that you really like and get a photo frame and have that on your altar. That's a really easy way of um, having like a visual representation of deities. The same applies for ancestors too if you want to do ancestor work. Um, Print out a photo of them. If you have any, if you have any, you know, loved ones that you have pictures of, print them out. Or if you have any um, symbolic representation of the culture of the ancestors, that like where they're from, perhaps have that on your altar and have that as a signifying um, representation of them. So it seems quite like simple stuff, but really just take a moment to reflect on who you are as a person. Who you are as a witch, who you want to be as a witch, and cater your sacred space around those things. Having all sorts of, you know, amazing brass candle holders and like whatever length statues and all sorts of stuff obviously is amazing. Um, collecting every dried herb on the planet in like an apothecary style cabinet of course looks beautiful, but those things I tend to find happen over time, it happens with practice and yeah, just don't compare yourself too much to stuff you see on Pinterest, on Instagram, on Twitter. Um, I know sometimes I like compare my altar to other altars which seem really elaborate and beautiful um, but don't fool yourself into thinking that stuff equals like effective magic. Stuff can certainly help. Um, tools are tools, right? It's in the name. They have their purpose, but I think that um, the magic itself is not inside the tool. Um, you can still practice effective magic with what you've got. So bear that in mind when crafting your altar. Don't think that you really need all these sort of things to be able to actually perform magic because that's not the case. All you need is yourself and 
that's really it. <laughs> Your will can go a long way, so just keep that in mind. So I'm going to go through some things which you can do at your altar because I remember when I was starting out I was sort of like okay I have this altar, I have some crystals on there, uh, what, what do I really do? Um, so the first advice I guess is you can sit there and that seems really stupid advice but just sit there, like just sit at your altar, be in that sanctifying moment, that sacred space, just be there breathe in and breathe out and this essentially I guess leads to meditation. You can meditate at your altar. It doesn't really need to have a specific purpose, a goal, just sit there and be with the energy. Get to know your altar and treat your altar well as well. Like I tend to not put um, anything that doesn't like help with my altar, my magical workings on there. I don't put random objects, I don't put my keys on there basically, I don't put any um, random objects which I wouldn't want to use in my sacred workings. So treat, treat your altar well, clean your altar regularly, cleanse it uh, and just be with it and if you want to talk to the altar you know just um, be, be with it I guess is a big thing that you could do which doesn't really take a lot to do. Like I touched on before you can practice tarot readings on there, um, do divination. This then leads to you can journal on your altar. So what I tend to do when I do magical workings and spells and such, I record what I've done and I do this recording on my altar. This also ties into shadow work. Shadow work obviously isn't necessarily itself spiritual, but of course it can be used uh, for your spiritual journey and it's something that's really valuable to do as well. So having that sort of altar space to do your shadow work, to do your journaling, your grimoire, book of shadows writing, I think is, is really lovely because again, it's sort of recognising that this is a sacred space. What I'm doing is a sacred act. So doing it here in your altar, I think is the perfect place to do it. Again, it's kind of a given that you can do your spell work on your altar. Um, again, with devotions for deities, uh, ancestors, land spirits, spirits, uh, yourself, um, yeah you can do offerings, devotions, spells, the the stuff you sort of think about of course, you could do that at your altar. Another thing which I guess you could do at your altar is read books and that sounds like obviously you don't only read books at your altar but the witches obviously tend to read a lot of witchcraft and occult books and, and of course reading these books can help you on your spiritual journey so why not spend a bit of time reading at your altar as well because it again is working on your magical self so is that not a sacred act in itself and yeah those are just some things you can do you know uh energy work as well i've talked about cleansing your altar regularly uh meditation all those sort of basic things to which you can do your altar is really valuable don't tend to just think that you only use your altar for spells because uh of course you do use your altar for spells but that's not the only thing you could do. A few other points I'd want to say is that it's okay if you don't have this huge table you can have for your altar. If you are a closet witch, for example, if you have to sort of hide your craft, having a small box that you can fill with perhaps some small chime candles or a couple bottles of herbs or whatever and putting it underneath your altar or I've seen people do it in wardrobes before um, I'm forgetting a lot of things. <laughs> Perhaps just in a drawer, for example. Where is, you can still set up a sacred space. It doesn't have to be fantastical and out in the open, basically. It could still be sacred and be hidden away. If you just don't have any space at all, um, perhaps find like a travel altar. It doesn't have to necessarily be for traveling, but you can still find um, small boxes like this and these can still be sacred in their own right. Print out tiny images of deities and you can put them up and have little tea lights. Just some like odd tips here and there. Um, I just want to make it known that of course you don't need to be um, an out in the open witch in order to have an altar. Work with what you can do of course. Not everyone has the luxury of being out in the open I appreciate that some people are still really close-minded 
So it's hard to have an altar sometimes in an environment where you don't feel safe. Um, so be careful. But you can also definitely still set up a sacred space. Um, just work with what you have, basically. So now is the fun part, at least for me. I'm going to give you my altar tour. So this is my altar. It is currently on this... I guess coffee table um, and I do have like a stool that I put in front to sit on but I also uh, can reach that height pretty well just on my knees so that's how I set up my altar. So looking at the actual space of my altar I have this burgundy sort of cloth and then I have this devoted area of white cloth which I tend to focus more on like my deity side and my uh, ancestor, that sort of that section. It's on a separate sort of bit of cloth. But just looking at the general view of it, like I have my herb cabinet here, which I'll go through in a minute. Um, this is just a blank area. I have a paper clip thing here for some reason. <laughs> this is just an area where essentially like I read or I journal on here or I'll like move my like magical workings here, I'll set up my spells here. So that is where essentially I do everything since it's a nice space for it. Also I do my tarot here as well. So, so my cards and my runes are here. My runes are in this bag. And then here I have a selenite piece just to uh, sort of cleanse the decks. My rider weight is in there and then I have my Emmy Brady tarot which is uh, really really stunning I love it so this cabinet is pretty tall I can't really get it all in one shot um, but I'll go through the contents of it now so here I have a sort of hagstone protector for the cabinet with a uh, binding rune that I got with my uh, runes and then I have a uh, sort of pentacle so inside the cabinet I have some herb mixes, I have some uh, random grocery store herbs, I've got some cloves, uh, I can never pronounce these, renodendrum? Oh my god, I'm sorry. But yeah, that's that, that I um, picked up in a forest. I have some basil, rose petals, lavender, um, hops, chamomile, um, some mugwort, I think that's just pepper in there, star anise down there, cinnamon, sage, rosemary. Yeah, so those are from my mum's garden actually. <laughs> I've got so many, but um, yeah, those are just the herbs I have right now. Oh, I've got some thyme back there, I forgot, but yeah, pretty basic. On the top here I have... I uh, just, I'm a messy witch basically, I've got so much random stuff, I have a hairband here, <laughs> um, I've got some dried orange peel, uh, I've got some like ashes there that I thought I'd save for what reason, I really don't know, I've got a little, little hedgehog that honestly I just wanted the hedgehog there, like he's not symbolic of anything. Um, my sister gave him to me and I love him, so I don't know why, but I put him there. <laughs> um, I've got some my old runes here. Um, they're like rose quartz runes. Um, I've got some incense ashes there. I've got... Uh, I used to work at a um, wildlife park, like a conservation wildlife park. Um, so I have a bunch of like animal feathers and a porcupine spine there. So I think there's emu in there and some owl feathers not really doing anything with them right now they're just there <laughs> i got some oil and some witch hazel so yeah just random um things up there they don't really make much sense so that's why they're there so onto this uh space here i have my incense which is uh nearly burning out now <laughs> i have my cauldron i have an incense sensor um a bell like i spoke about before a pendulum, which is meant to be over here actually. <laughs> have some pine cones, um, representative of like life and death and rebirth. I have black tourmaline for protection. Um, a pink Himalayan salt, I almost forgot the name. Pink Himalayan salt, a uh, candle holder. Pink Himalayan salt is meant to be uh, good for like banishing negative energy and 
bringing about positive energy so I usually like have that lit most of the time um, oil burner and uh, oil's pretty much gone out now <laughs> I have a hagstone over there. I have hagstones pretty much um, everywhere on this altar. Like I have three hagstones over there, as you can't see. And in every corner, like below this actual um, table, I have hagstones in each corner. So, and then I have like this hagstone here. So I, yeah, I, I do all the hagstones I've collected myself. Um, I do tend to get a lot of hagstones from the beach. So. Yeah, there you go. I'm a bit hagstone obsessed. In terms of deity representations, I have this key here um, for Hecate. I have um, this that I got in my stay in Athens. There you go, it's focused now. <laughs> um, of Artemis. Yeah, I went to Greece and got this. Um, I didn't really purposely get Artemis, which is the... Um, weird thing for me I kind of just they had a whole bunch of these obviously it's quite like a tourist thing to buy um but for some reason I just picked Artemis didn't really have um a proper like intent to buy an Artemis one I just did and I think that in itself was probably a sign <laughs> but yeah this candle holder which I think in general goes really like nicely with Artemis I have this deer here again I've had this since I was um like five or something and I don't even remember how I got it either like I'm, my parents my like none of my family gave it to me like I just have it so I thought I would put them there so yeah that is basically the surface of what my altar looks like um my altar does sort of change depending on um what I sort of like do with it in the drawers here uh I basically just have candles and these are like a bunch of charcoal discs that I um, bought um, candle snuffer because I don't blow out my candles <laughs> yeah just these are all literally little candles I've got some old candles in there I'm gonna just um, reuse and some spell candles here different colors I've got some yellow purple green I think white I think I've got black there as well somewhere yeah so those are candles. In here is a whole bunch of stuff, basically. Oh yeah, I have more herbs here, which I forgot about, so... I think I've got some resins here, I think dragon blood there. Um, some dahlia petals that I picked up. Um, yeah, a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> some copal, copal there. Yeah, basically just got empty jars in here as well, um, oils, beeswax, yeah, just a whole bunch of stuff, or spell workings mostly, in there. Down here is where it gets a bit interesting, so I've got my book of mirrors there where I record my spells, I've got my tumble stones there which I use most for my like magic, pencil case. <laughs> I have my Book of Shadows with yet another Hagstone and uh, this lovely pentacle with, you guessed it, oak leaves because I love oak. <laughs> so yeah, that's my Book of Shadows. I've got my um, like herbarium herbal grimoire there and stuff that I won't get out but it's all there are um, spells, spell oils, incenses they're all there because it's sort of dark um they don't get a lot of sunlight in there because of this so it's a good place to sort of just hide them away um spell oils you know can just fester in there oh yeah i got some incense sticks here i forget but yeah all sorts of stuff there um under here i have um other binders which i won't go into but they're basically shadow work and some other um witchy stuff and they, there you go there's one of the hexstones. <laughs> And then another hexstone there, and then I have another two on the other side there. I don't have a huge amount of storage space where I live currently, so everything is kind of in boxes. <laughs> um, so all of my um, incense and uh, like box incense and oils are all just in here. And this is the kind of box I was talking about in terms of like a closet witch altar. You can get like a box like this. Um, I mean, this is 
like all broken now to be honest but it did have like a lock on here and you could padlock that um you could just place this under your bed and it's big enough where you could like put in a, a great amount of stuff um but something like that is really good for closet witches you can hide this away under your bed in a wardrobe just somewhere out of sight um and yeah so that obviously works and you can put stuff on top as well right so that is potential notion but i just use it for my like incense and oils here and then i guess the last thing i'll show you is just uh more stuff here i'm showing you this stuff because these are things for my altar i just don't have them out all the time so i have these like um seven day candles which i'll bring them out they look like this um they have a lot of like uses in witchcraft and paganism you can put in sigils um symbols for your deities like this one is a pull out candle so that can actually come out but um i've not found a purpose for these yet um in the UK, they're really hard to find. If anyone has a link in the UK to buy these for cheap, like for less than £10, let me know. This is me actually like begging <laughs> because they're so hard to find. Um, but yeah, so not decided what to use these for yet, but these are great altar pieces that you could have. Um, because they can be deity representations, ancestor representations, obviously you can use them in spell workings, you can use them as like, um, like wards, protection um, candles, all sorts of uses that these have. So I recommend that if, you know, you're struggling on what to do for like a deity representation, you can buy some of these. In America, you can get these for like at the dollar store, which makes me really envious of you guys. Um, so that's why I'm like saying that they're good to, if you're in America, and um, you sort of recognise these and you can you can definitely like find them quite easily for your altar if you want. And then in here I just have like my mortar and pestle. I have this sort of like um, cup for water, water magic, a candle <laughs> in here, more candle holders. Um, and in here I have, I basically have a whole bunch of like spell stuff. I have some ribbon string, um, all sorts of uses for different uh different spells so yeah just have that in a box but yeah sorry if that was a bit of a rubbish altar tool but i hope my advice was useful to um to some of you my main thing i guess is just go with your gut go with your heart and uh i hope making an altar is something that's fun for you and you end up creating a space which you deeply enjoy i love my altar although it might not look massively fantastical uh to some people i really like it. it does the job for me and especially like just where i live right now which is not necessarily my like permanent residence so it does the job for me before i say goodbye i wanted to mention that i have made a discord server now um i've made one for my youtube channel so it's called the oak coven and i've put a link below where you can join for free. Um, I basically want to create a friendly community that's active and I want to really emphasize sharing resources and helping each other out on our journeys. You know, I am also a witch on my own journey and I don't know everything. You know, I'm still learning, I'm still practicing, I'm still developing my spiritual self. So I'd want to, um, emphasize that you know we're all learning together and we're going to help each other out and that's sort of the purpose of the discord server i'm trying to build i guess um so feel free to join it's an all ages server it could be any age any background anyone <laughs> and uh yeah anyway so that link is below thank you so much for watching if you got this far um, i really really appreciate it i hope that you're doing well and Thank you for supporting me and uh, see you in the next video.